Breaking news out of the NATO summit in Chicago. Joining us now to make sense of it all is editorial page editor Paul Gigo. We do try to make sense. <laughs> to talk about the NATO meetings, tensions with Pakistan, and the drawdown in Afghanistan. Paul, welcome. Uh, so the big news today out of Chicago is that the president announced that Afghan forces would take the lead of, for combat operations in 2013. Is this a good idea? Well, I, it's only a good idea if we can actually achieve the mission doing so. And I worry that, in fact, it's too, too early a drawdown. It's more than the military wanted. Remember, they were supposed to first trade off to the Afghans 2014. That was the last NATO meeting decided that. And then Obama, we now learn from a weekend story in the New York Times, had decided he wanted to speed things up and almost unilaterally. Uh, decided this on his own and uh, um, though there's a lot of nice language in the communique and on, on Afghanistan on, on in NATO it's very clear that he's heading to the exits and he's going to lead everybody out now I hope the military can accomplish enough in the interim so that we can really do a safe trade-off but I think that's an open question. Um, Paul, the other big news out of the summit uh, yesterday and today is the relationship between the United States and Pakistan. President Obama declined to hold bilateral meeting with Pakistani right. President Zardari uh, after that country refused to open, reopen rather, supply routes, supply routes. into Afghanistan. Uh, how damaging is this rift to the war effort in Afghanistan? Well, I have some sympathy for the president on this one. I think Pakistan's behaving badly. Mm -hmm. I think they, they, you know, they're demanding an official apology for that helicopter, that air, that raid on, on Pakistani territory, a mistaken raid, as it turned out, but that killed some Pakistanis, um, and uh, you know they're still refusing to crack down on the Haqqani network or on the terror sanctuaries in the border area, which are sending people over and killing Americans and NATO uh, members and uh, and Afghans. So I sympathize with the president. I don't think that uh, that he should have met with them. Uh, until they, they get this worked out. Uh, Paul, did you get a sense from the summit this week that the relationship with the Afghan president is being repaired? Uh, or is it pretty much business as usual, give and take with him? Uh, we do something he doesn't like, he uh, denounces the United States in Afghanistan or, or, or not? He'll continue to do that. He's a very difficult guy to, to, to deal with. And he, he, you know, the question is when, he, when his term ends in 2014, is he going to run again or is he going to try? To, uh, would allow a, a transition. We hope he'll allow a, a transition. Relationship with Karzai have actually been improving of late. We did strike a tentative agreement for a status of forces accord beyond our presence so that there'll be an extended American presence, presence after 2013, after 2014. And they've worked out those pretty well, which is more than we worked out in Iraq. So that's act there's been some progress, although behind the scenes, obviously, he's still a prickly sort and I'm sure Obama doesn't like him. Um, well, <laughs> very briefly, you had some really violent protests over the weekend in Chicago uh, in, in light of this NATO summit. Uh, is there anything you can, you can tell us about that? Is it indicative of U.S. war fatigue, or are these just uh, disaffected in, youths? It's indicative of uh, the last 20 years of disaffected uh, protests. I mean, look, these guys show up. They're professional protesters, okay? okay? They show up at every one of these NATO meetings. They show up at every one of these G8 meetings. Anything that, any time where they can get access and show their, themselves, they do. So I wouldn't make much of it.